What's going on everybody? Welcome to After Prison Show and today I want to share with you 10 things that you never knew prisoners could buy. We've done videos in the past where we talk about the crazy things that prisoners are able to buy in terms of food items, in terms of electronics. Well today we're going to expound upon that a little bit further talking about 10 things that you never knew prisoners could buy. Why? Might be a question that also comes to mind with this and it's actually because of the pin pal relationships that I'm having with two individuals who are serving life sentences in prison right now and how one of them just recently sent me the entire commissary list of things that they can buy. Which is something that I know quite a bit about. You know, anytime that you get you a pen pal, you got you that girl starting to write you, one thing that you want to slide inside of that letter that you send it to her is that commissary list. Oh my god, I just received a commissary list from my prison pen pal. Bob, it's nothing! Nothing, Bob! Don't worry about it! It's just a letter from a bill collector! He can order these things? I need to make sure that I give him enough money so he can order each and every one of these items. Bob! Bob, I need the credit card, Bob! Now it was when I received this commissary list from my prison pen pal that again, I was reminded of so many crazy things that we could order while serving time. I was able to order these things for myself if I wanted to do so. Quite a few of them, I never did. But I could have if I wanted to. And all of these items that I'm getting ready to share with you in this video are probably items that are gonna be surprising to you. Items that you never had any idea a prisoner could order. And also again, items that you'll probably ask yourself, why exactly would a prisoner need that? So, it's with all of that being mentioned that what do you say we go ahead and we do? <laughs> Boy, I just got hit with the bow and arrow doing that dive scene right there. Head first into this video. Folks, as I share these items with you, I'm also going to talk to you a little bit about why a prisoner could potentially need these items or why they definitely would need these items as well. So let's go ahead and begin with the very first item, making this list. Did you know that while serving time, prisoners can order for themselves their very own calculator? A calculator. And I know the very first question that comes to mind is why? Why would a prisoner be able to order a calculator? Why would they need a calculator? Well, to give you my personal opinion, I don't honestly know why they are allowed to order a calculator, but just to give you a little insight and in my perspective, you know, a lot of prisoners, myself included, are not very strong in the math department. Why, well, I am so glad they sold this calculator on commissary. Thank God! Yo, what you doing with the calculator, though? You ordered that off a of commissary? Boy, you must be flexing for real, though. A calculator? What you need that for? What I need it for? What you mean what I need it for? I need to be able to do my math. I'm trying to get my GED in prison. I'm gonna need this when I'm trying to order up my commissary and how much money I can spend. You know that girl sent me $25. Boy, I'm balling up in here. And plus, I'm trying to figure out what the equation is for if I tell on you how much of a time cut I'm gonna get. If they take off 10 years, Shoot, I could be home by now. Yeah, again, I don't really know the real reason why prisoners are allowed to order calculators, but they definitely are useful for pretty much all of the reasons that I just described right there and probably some others as well. Saying though, that girl put $20 up on the phone. Each phone call is $15. Hey, anybody know the equation for extortion? Cause that's what these phone calls is. Now they sell two different types of calculators at this particular prison. One of them is called a small clear calculator. You can order that for $9.01. Boy, you couldn't just take the $9 though. You gotta tack on an extra penny. Why is it really $9.01? Does that make any sense at all? And you can also order a scientific calculator, and this one costs a little bit more. This one is $14.48. Folks, keep this in mind with the items that we're gonna be talking about in this video. All of these are gonna have like a weird price with some additional amount of change added on to the dollar amount that, again, you gotta really wonder what that's for. Just trying to squeeze every little penny they can out of you while you're serving some time. Coming in at number two is an item that can be good and it also could be bad at the same damn time. And we're talking about earplugs. Did you know that prisoners are allowed to order earplugs? Now throughout all of the time that I ever served, I didn't ever really order earplugs. I made my own out of cellophane or saran wrap that you would get from the chow hall. Maybe you're getting a bag lunch. They're gonna saran wrap those sandwiches. You take a little bit of that. You take a little toilet paper. You drop it in there like a little dope baggie. Twist it up, put it in your ear and bung! You ain't no longer in prison anymore. Actually, you still are, but at least you can't hear like 80% 
of the loud 24-7 chaos that is going on around you. Now these earplugs that you can buy off of Commissary are foam earplugs costing a whopping 57 cents a pair. I guess that's not really too bad. I mean really you cannot put a price on some kind of quiet times. And whether you buy earplugs off of the commissary or whether you make your own, again, these are going to be a really good thing in an effort to help you try to get some sleep at night, trying to tone down the volume of everybody screaming and pretty much acting a fool. And again, I say this happens pretty much 24-7 wherever you're serving time at, but just as good as a pair of earplugs could be, they could also be a bad thing as well. You know, a lot of guys just won't use earplugs because it's gonna leave you in a pretty vulnerable situation. Yes, it's gonna make things a little bit quieter, but it's also gonna prevent you from hearing that guy trying to creep up on you when you're asleep, possibly trying to attack you, possibly trying to beat you up. And in my own personal experiences, I've seen guys get beat up, get attacked while they're sleeping in the bed. That actually didn't work out for the guy that tried to do that. And in fact, he actually ended up losing the fight to the guy that he was trying to attack while sleeping. But for me personally, I used earplugs pretty much all throughout the time that I served. I felt like trying to get just a little bit of peace and quiet was worth the risk of potentially not being able to hear an attack that was coming for me and to be honest with you there never was a time when somebody tried to fight me in my bunk because let me tell you had anybody ever tried to attack me while I was sleeping oh you got the wrong one you got the wrong one and I'm gonna show you real quick what would have happened had you tried to do so and they'd have learned real quick what would have happened had they ever tried to do so Try me if you want to. Coming in at number three is a prayer rug. You know, in prison, religion can be a huge thing, and dudes take religion very seriously. And there's actually a few different religious type items that prisoners can purchase. And a few of those items we'll be mentioning in this video as well. But a prayer rug is mostly purchased by your Muslim prisoners or prisoners of that religious belief right there. And I can't honestly think of any time where I saw somebody who purchased a prayer rug from commissary and used that for anything other than actually getting down and praying. And a big reason why that probably never happened is because if a Muslim prisoner saw you doing something other than what the intended purpose of that prayer rug was intended for, you're most certainly gonna have you some problems. And you know, when I sit here and think about what else you could possibly use one of these prayer rugs for and not to be disrespectful at all, one thing that definitely comes to mind is hanging that prayer rug off of a top bunk to cover up and make sure that you can't be seen whenever you're doing tattoos in prison, especially in a dormitory type environment. Because what we would end up doing was hanging a towel down. That way if a guard comes through that door, they're not gonna see the tattooing taking place. They're definitely gonna see the towel probably. And that's gonna automatically make them wanna come back there and search you. But it's best to let them see that towel and you to try to explain that you was just trying to let that towel dry off than actually having them bust through that front door seeing you tattooing because you're caught already. The prayer rugs that you can purchase off of commissary are 44 inches by 26 inches and these things cost a $11.87. Number four, and this is probably going to be crazy to some people, but they sell these in prison, at least at most prisons. Razor blades for shaving. You know, a big problem inside of the prisons, especially what we're seeing in terms of prison-related news stories, especially down in Alabama, South Carolina, Delaware, prisons where they've had like huge uprisings, riots, a lot of violence, Alabama being the most violent state in terms of prisons. Weapons are a big part of all of that. And couldn't a razor blade actually be considered that? Twin blade razors, what they have on commissary for shaving. You can purchase up to five of these when going to commissary. These things cost 32 cents a piece. And you know, outside of just shaving and actually using those as a weapon, razors in prison have quite a few different uses. You can use them to light cigarettes with, something that you probably never even knew. You can use them to make little utility knives for arts and crafts projects. You can use them while cooking prison meals to cut up your summer sausages or your pickles. You can even use a razor blade to cut your hair to get a full blown haircut. But no matter how you really spin it, it's just the craziest thing in the world to think that while in prison, you are gonna get a contraband charge if you get caught with anything that is metal sharpened and could do some damage. But couldn't a razor blade do just that? and you're allowed to purchase five of them per commissary store day for 32 cents a piece. Making the list at number five is something that's kind of like an oxymoron to me. I don't know if that's really the right word to use, but number five is Band-Aid. 
sentence. You know, if you've never been to prison and you think about going to prison, what do you what what comes to mind? Like assaults, attacks, fights, getting hurt? Potentially those are some things that could come to mind and I guess that's why it's just funny for me personally to think, you know, they sell you band-aids on commissary. And I have definitely seen while serving time people needing far more than a band-aid. A band-aid just ain't gonna be able to fix everything. Damn! What happened to you though? Oh, you told him that. You told him, you told him to give you next on the phone though. You don't know who that dude was that you was talking to. Band-aids, a form of medical treatment, things of that nature. There's actually a few different things that you can purchase on commissary. And in terms of medicine or first aid and things like that, Tylenols, sugar-free cough drops, Tussin-free cough syrups. It is the Tussin that people be drinking the, the cough syrup for, right? But even though they got Band-Aids on commissary for little scrapes and nicks and things like that, possibly trying to break apart a razor, that actually makes a lot of sense. I've cut myself many a time trying to break open a razor. Band-Aids could also be used for all sorts of other things as well. Possibly a fashion statement. And you know, I'm being absolutely, I had to think about it for a second. I am being absolutely truthful with you. Now that I think back to it, I actually saw people doing that. I didn't think they did that anymore though. But in prison, boy, the, the fashion and what's fashionably in, in prison, on a whole different level. Band-Aids could be used as tape. If you're trying to tape up a picture of your girl, God, I know you gonna ride with me. You ain't picked up the phone in so long. Got your picture band-aided up to my bunk, looking at you every night. I know Jody got you. I know Jody got you. Probably gonna need to put a band-aid over that broken heart as well. Band-Aids can be purchased off a of prison commissary in a box of 10 for 87 cents. That's actually not bad. You know, everything in prison is super expensive. Thank God the Band-Aids ain't. Number six is gonna be another item that you're gonna ask yourself, why? Why the hell would they sell this in prison? But this is something that prisoners can purchase from commissary if they so choose to do so. And also have the money to be able to do so as well. A flexible ruler. What in the world is a prisoner gonna need a ruler for? What are we measuring? Why are you taking that ruler in the shower with you though? There's not a lot of things that I can think of offhand that really need measuring in prison. Boy, they sold you a 12 inch pickle off a commissary? Wow, that's a big pickle, 12 inches? But to keep it absolutely funky with you guys, I actually had a ruler or two while I was serving time. I was an artist, I wasn't really trying to measure anything, I wasn't a class A contractor slash prisoner. I was drawing. I always needed to make me a straight line and that flexible ruler definitely didn't help me to do so. You know, you think about it, you would buy a ruler, the biggest reason why you would buy rulers off of commissary is for artwork, but you would wanna be able to get a straight line from that and you're not really ever gonna get too straight of a line with a flexible ruler and then the only other alternative is to be measuring stuff. You don't wanna really be measuring too much while you in prison. Hey, why your sausage look bigger than mine though? Damn, you got a big sausage. They sold you that on commissary. And even though I'm making some jokes about this, I am reminded of something pretty crazy. I don't think this involved a ruler, however, this definitely involved size. I remember this one time this guy came back from commissary, he bought a pickle, the pickles that they sell you in the bag. He saw the size of the pickle, it was this big. He had a micro pickle, and he took that back to commissary. He told him he wanted another pickle because that pickle wasn't big enough. True story, didn't even need a flexible ruler for that. But real quick while we're on this item, these flexible rulers, I ask all of you, you know, what do you think a flexible ruler could be used for while serving time? And these flexible rulers can't be purchased off a of commissary, you can't have but one of these things. They're $1.65, they probably cost 10 cents on Alibaba or Wish. And if I can remember correctly, they also come in an assortment of colors as well. I actually think I had a pink flexible ruler one time. Ain't nothing convict status about that. Could never give you my convict word uh, with a pink flexible ruler in prison. And of course it has to be a flexible ruler because they don't want you to have no weapons. They don't want to be selling you nothing that you're going to be able to make a weapon out of. Rewind this thing back two items. I think it was two. Back to them razor blades though. Number seven is an absolute prison survival item for some people. And this is another medication or medical health care first aid potentially type item. And what I'm talking about here is Beano gas relief. Now I know immediately this may sound like I'm making some sort of a joke, but I can guarantee you, oh, this is no laughing matter at all. 
Folks, when you go to prison or you go to jail or you get locked up, and I pray for Jesus, none of you ever do. But one thing that you will learn while there, actually you'll smell it right along with learning it, is that some dudes have the worst type of gas that you've ever smelt in your life. Imagine what they're eating. Nothing but processed food. Grade D meat, if it's even meat at all. And what that does to your intestines and your insides, you're like a walking dead zombie on the inside. In fact, some guys will smell just like that. What? God, you're peeling my lips back. You're peeling the paint off of my lips. Boy, you smell like you dead on the inside. God, oh my God, my eyes is watering. It's in my ear. It's, I can't even hear. What? What? Gonna smell some of the worst smells you ever did while serving time. And this Beano gas relief is an absolute survival item. And the reason why I say that is because let you be around someone where you let out a little toot or it's going to be a lot worse than that. You can't control. Hey, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an act of nature right here. This is a, this is a natural bodily reaction. It's going to cause you some problems and let you do it in the cell where you can't say that it wasn't you. Yo, yo, what is that smell? Hey, that's you! I, uh, I don't, I, I, I do not know what you're talking about. It's not me, it's not me, it ain't me. I don't know what you're talking it must be you. It must be coming out the toilet, out the drain or something. Ain't gonna be no denying it there when it's just you and another person up in that cell. So if you know you got you some gas problems and you're trying to avoid you some problems in prison, you might want to get you some of that Beano Gas Relief, which is for sale on Prison Commissary for a whopping $7.07. It's pretty damn expensive. But what's your life worth to you? $7.07 .07 might not be a bad price to pay for a little protection. Number eight's a pretty crazy one, and it's crazy because they'll give you this. But you can also purchase it off of Commissary, and that is toilet paper. Now the crazy thing about toilet paper in prison is toilet paper in prison is crazy. They pass it out sometimes once a week, sometimes not but once every two weeks and try to make a single roll of toilet paper last you two weeks. You're gonna be using one square at a time and you're gonna be washing your hands a lot. But there are certain prisoners who quote unquote got it like that. Meaning they got money, they got money to blow. They are flexing in prison like that flexible ruler, and they're able to go to the commissary and max out, spend the limit every single week. They mealing up all the time. They got enough money to purchase for themselves some luxurious rolls of toilet paper off of commissary. You know, when you come back from commissary, that speaks highly of your social economic status in prison. Are you a boss or not? Hey man, look at boy, look at Joe over there flexing though. Joe flexing like a flexible ruler. He got three rolls of that toilet paper off commissary though. What Joe think he at? Man, he think he in the Hilton? Hey, we about to go steal everything from him. We'll leave him the toilet paper though. You know, I never bought toilet paper off of commissary, but I certainly saw some prisoners who did. And thinking back to that, you know, I just remember looking at these dudes like, damn, boy, you a ballin' for real. Boy, you got the double ply toilet paper in prison. You are super fly with your double ply. Super fly with your double ply. That actually sounds like a good song idea. Scott toilet tissue can be purchased off of commissary for a whopping, what? <laughs> $1.21 a roll. And you can purchase up to two of them per commissary store day. Number nine is a really interesting item that you probably had no idea that prisoners could purchase. And I'm talking about oils, essential oils or something like that. These oils though are scented. So they're almost like incense oils. Things like that. And they've got some really interesting names for these as well. Such as sandalwood and frankincense. Ugh. I remember that frankincense. These things smell really weird too. Not all of these smell good. And that frankincense, I will never forget that for as long as I live. Because not only will prisoners use these, they'll mix them together, they'll add a little other stuff to them, and they'll really be trying to turn them into clones. I actually think these are a religious item as well. But not only will prisoners try to use these as colognes, they'll sell these, this could be a prison hustle, add a little water to it, your stretch game. You could take one of these little bottles of oil and probably make you a good little profit if you know what you're doing. But this frankincense, this wasn't a cologne. And in fact, one prisoner in particular who I served time with who's gonna sound very familiar when I mention them, Peaches, used to use this as perfume. 
And the reason I'll never forget that is because peaches and frankincense went hand in hand because I never really thought of frankincense. I thought of Frankenstein, which is sort of what peaches look like. But that smell, it almost brings back like traumatic thoughts. Just that word alone, like I can smell it. Ugh. But you've got a couple of different assortments of these oils. You've got your sandalwood, your frankincense, your myrrh, myrrh, something like that, your Wiccan ritual. Yes, these are definitely religious items. So I mean no disrespect mentioning these the way that I am, but this is something the dude did with these. Your flex game is strong if you're buying oils off a of commissary and putting a little dab of that on before you go into the counselor's office, man or woman. You just want to stunt. You want to look good, smell good. Don't matter, you in prison. Folks, you can only have one of these oils. You can't even buy multiples of these. So if you did want to get into this as a prison hustle, you're going to need another prisoner to purchase you other ones because you can't buy but just one. One, not one of each, just one. And these things are $4.71 for a little itty bitty vial of these. The final item to make this list and coming in at number 10 is jewelry. You know, this is something you might not imagine that prisoners can have while locked up, and you possibly ask yourself, why? Why would prisoners be allowed to order jewelry or be able to have it? But in this particular case, they are. Prisoners are actually allowed to order them an 18-inch silver chain for $19.36. I don't know if that's real silver, if that's only $19 and some change. And accompanying that chain, you can get you a piece, an iced out piece to be rocking with that, silver medallions. And these medallions are anywhere between $36 upwards of 39 bucks. So if you see a prisoner rocking that 18 inch chain with that silver medallion on that, knowing he spent a cool $50 on that ice game, oh, he's flexing. But it's not in most cases for that particular reason right there. And what these medallions are, are again, a religious item. Because prisoners are able to purchase a number of different medallions for either Allah, the Star of David, a crucifix. They're even able to order a pentagram, Buddha, or Thor's hammer. Folks, when I tell you that religion is a super, super important thing in prison, let the fact that prisoners are able to purchase jewelry with these religious pieces speak to exactly that. But like I mentioned at the beginning of this item, you know, not all prisoners are purchasing these things for the religious purposes. In some cases, prisoners are rocking this jewelry just to be uh, looking fly up inside the prisons. And I most certainly saw quite a few prisoners trying to rock this religious ice game for exactly that reason right there. Hey, look, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did so, please leave a like and a comment letting me know exactly what you thought about it. As always, until next time, enjoy life, the free world. Never take a moment for granted, and make the most of every day.